Welcome back everybody, welcome back finally to another video, it's been a while, been an international break, been a bit boring, but how are we all doing? Doing good, doing good, I'm happy to be back, happy to be making another video, I know it's been a while like I just said, this is the big one, this is the big one, Arsenal at home, Arsenal currently sit top of the Premier League on goal difference, top above us by a point, as I said on goal difference they are plus 7, the Liverpool both set on 64 points, and most of us know the score for this game. Players, manager, us as fans, we know the score. Before I get into this game and break it down, if you do me a massive favour and please leave a like on this video, I'd be massively appreciated. And subscribe if you are new. Support recently has been insane. The last two live shows have really blown up. And uh, we appreciate every single one of you who has come in, tuned in, chatted to us, um, become a member, super chatted, just like the videos, like the streams, whatever you do. That was a massive stream, really appreciate it. So if you don't want to miss future streams, because there will be some planned, of course, there usually is, especially when big fixtures happen, do turn on the notification bell so you never miss when we do go live, because they just happen when we get the chance. And of course, top line in the description, you can become a channel member. There is a new perk. If you missed the live streams, if you were there, you would know, but there is a new perk. We have opened up our old, if you're an OG, you'll know this, our old Discord server. Well, you can come and chat to us, become a member, there is a link in the members tab, so if you're already a member, if you want to become a member, it's there, come join, chat to us, talk about the games, you don't have to be a City fan if you don't want, we do have a few other fans from, like I said, when we used to have it open, but uh, just a little sneak peek, just a little update on the memberships, um, again, don't feel like you have to, but they are there if you want to help support the channel further, I'll stop waffling and get into the game, because that's why you're all here, and that's why I'm here, um, like I said at the start, we know the score. We know exactly what this game means. And maybe some people have slight variations of outcomes and and things like that. But for me, must win. Must win. It's different to when we went to Anfield. When we went to Anfield, we knew that a draw still keeps us within touching distance. So it was a must not lose. And... Bar the fact that the performance was just a minor miracle while we managed to get out of point from that. We'd done the job. We didn't lose. Not ideal, but we didn't lose. We don't have that luxury this time around. We, we cannot afford to drop. We can't even afford to draw, in my opinion. A draw for me in this game, in terms of potential points-wise, just doesn't set us up any better than a loss would my opinion, if you look at a draw, yes, Arsenal would still be a point ahead of us, they're still within catching distance, Liverpool play on the Sunday, but the game before, they play the two o'clock slot, so by the time that we kick off, we'll know the score with that, we'll know exactly what what the situation is, but I'd imagine they'd be picking up all three points, I believe they play Brighton, um, but I'm just expecting Liverpool to do what Liverpool do and what Liverpool have done in these title runnings and pick up three points, put the pressure on. Um, and look, if we get a draw against Arsenal, like I said, it doesn't put us in the worst spot possible against Arsenal, but it's what it does for the rest of it. Liverpool could then go and go three points clear with a superior goal difference with sort of, what, nine games left to go at that point. You're relying on a lot. You're relying on not only Liverpool to, to slip up once, but you're relying on a big goal swing if it goes to goal difference. We're not too far behind them. We're miles behind Arsenal because they keep you know ripping these, these lower down teams apart. But when it comes to Liverpool, if you think that Liverpool might have one dropping of points in them, even if we go perfect, we still need a significant swing in terms of goals, um, which is a scary thought considering we keep leaking goals. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't be as confident knowing that, you know, with a draw, even if Liverpool do slip up, it could go to goal difference. Which is why, again, I think we need to win because I don't know whether I can see Liverpool slipping up twice. Same thing with Arsenal. Arsenal win four points clear. Liverpool will be four points clear if they win their game as well. If we lose, you're relying on two slip ups. And with nine games left to go, with the, the standard that we've set of being near perfect towards the end of the season and teams having to match that, can you realistically see them, you know, not winning in two of their games? I find it difficult. I find it really difficult to see that situation. So that's where I sit with the game. 
you let me know in the comment section below where you sit again like i just said my overall point is we have to win a draw is not good enough a loss is disastrous but uh a win has to has to be the result if we really want to go and win four in a row we have to win um because even then it still doesn't guarantee we'll be top because liverpool um can potentially still stay ahead of us and then it's just all about who blinks first at that point so that's what I think of the overall game in terms of the team. We, of course, know there's a few injury concerns after the international break. Thanks, Gareth. Um, John Stones, Kyle Walker, they are both out. It's undisclosed as to, you know, exactly what they've done or exactly how long they're going to be out for a few games. Uh, Walker's injury was worse, but he'd probably recover better than Stones. So who knows? Who really knows? But they're both missing here. Uh, Akanji was a doubt, but it turns out he's fit, available, and trained. So thank God we have a right hand side of the fence. Um, and that's where most of the injury news lies. I'll put up a predicted starting 11 up on screen now for you to see. Um, I don't think there's much wiggle room with this, this team. I feel like out of anybody who missed out, who I could see, it will be Kovacic. I think he's unlucky to miss out, but just, you know so be the personnel that we've got available for this game that he misses out i think that the Grealish being fit is a big 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 boost we know that we play better when he's in the team um and kevin de bruyne hopefully being over the hill of his injuries not over the hill in terms of finish that's probably the wrong words to use but you know what i mean last two couple of, last couple of games he's done United and Liverpool, not great either of them. Liverpool was sort of maybe lower down on that one, of course, a bit of a tougher game. Um, then missed Newcastle with a, a slight problem, but he is hopefully over that and ready to go. He loves playing against Arsenal. He's got an incredible record against them. Um, and we need him. We need him to put in a big performance. I think the, the, the makeup of this team in terms of the way that I've set it up and which I hope that it is there, of course, with the defence, there's not much... To actually change, we don't have really have any other personnel with Stones and Walker being injured. Um, there really is kind of no other option there. Edison's kind of 50-50 for me. I was tempted to put Ortega in there because I don't know how fit Edison is, but I believe he's trained, so he should be okay. I'd rather have him for a game like this. I think Ortega's done well. Um, when he's come in, he makes big saves, but I think that... The writing's kind of on the wall when he's there. You look at the Newcastle game just before the international break. Every time he kicked it, it kind of went back to them. And I went back to Newcastle. His kicking wasn't great. And against Arsenal, who were a much better high press inside, um, that could cause us problems. We know Edison's calm on the ball. Has he got a mistake in him? I mean, he made one not too long ago. But we know exactly what we're going to get from him. So I'd rather him play, to be honest. Um... I don't know about you, maybe you, you think different, maybe you think that there may be a few more shots on goal, you'd rather have Ortega because you think he's better in terms of shot stopping, I don't know, it's 50-50 for me, like I said, um, of whether you, you put Edison back in, considering he's just been injured, or whether you stick with Ortega, but in terms of the way that I set this team up, my original point being that the way that I've set this, in terms of the way that I'd kind of want it to be set, I think the personnel is probably right, whether Bernardo and Foden be switched around, I imagine so, but I'd rather have it this way around, if Foden in the middle, Bernardo out wide. I think that what I'm looking at in this game is we're not going to have, even though we're at home, we're not going to have total control. It's not going to happen. Grealish helps, but with Stones missing, um, basically changing our entire system because he is the system. Um no attacking fullback either, so you can't have Walker bombing on down the right. It makes it very difficult. Um, so we're probably going to be defending quite a bit. Um, so in terms of what I'd quite like to see is almost last season-esque where you just have two controlling players in the wide areas. You have Grealish and Bernardo out wide. They don't do anything fancy, take a man on like a docu or anything like that, you know, burn up the grass and... and you know, drag players, they, they, they sit there and they control. They maybe attract a little bit of attention, like Grealish does, two, three bodies on him, and give it to, to a teammate who's in space, essentially. And then th that's why I'd play Foden in the middle, because I want my match winners in the middle. I want my difference makers through the centre of the pitch. I don't think necessarily that 
plain wide suits us with what we've got available, especially defensively with the fullback situations. Plain wide maybe doesn't suit what we've got. So plain central maybe would not be a bad idea. Get Haaland a bit more involved, Kevin De Bruyne as well, get him involved in the game. And then that's why I'd rather have Foden in the middle, simply because he's a match winner. Uh, Bernardo Silva works hard, of course. He's probably better defensively, but there's four centre-halves and Rodri. You know, defensively, realistically, when they're all at it, should be more than good enough to nullify as best as they can. But I do think Foden and Bernardo will probably be the other way around. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'd rather have it this way, like I said, because my match win has been in the middle of the pitch and being involved in everything is my preference. But with the fact that Arsenal are going to cause us problems during the game, Bernardo Silva in the middle is probably a safer option. Like Kovacic, Kovacic would be a safer option, but it's, you know, how do you fit him in? At the end of the day, I don't really think there's any space. So that's what I think of the team. In terms of my score prediction, I'm going to go for a 2-1. It feels like it could swing. Like I said, with Liverpool, it could be a classic. It could be tight. This could be a, a Premier League classic with the way that we've been defending um, and the fact that we're at home. We could score loads, but we could concede loads. That's just, that's kind of sums up our season, really. Um so it could be a classic. I'm going for a 2-1. I'm hoping we can keep it sort of semi-tight at the back. That's kind of my hope that we can prove that we can defend even when it's not an ideal defensive structure. We can still do our best to keep teams out. So I'm going to go for 2-1. You let me know this in the comment section below. And the question on the screen and the main point that I want to know from anybody watching this video is is, in your opinion, the league title over if... We do not win. Not if we lose. If we do not win, is the league title over for us? Um, you already know my thoughts. I gave them at the start of the video. I think that if, we pick, if we're not winning this game, I think we can put this on the back burner and just hope for a miracle. I think that it'd be very difficult for us to win the league if we do not win this game. That's my opinion. I want to know yours because yeah, football is a game of opinions. I'm interested to see what people think of this game. But that's all from me. If you do me a massive favour on your way out, please leave a like on this video. It'd be massively appreciated and subscribe if you are new. But recently has been amazing. Like I said at the top of the show, um, take the notification bells on so you can come and join our next live stream and get involved with the chat. We always love talking to you guys. Um, and of course, top line in the description, there is a link to become a channel member. There is some perks there which you can read through. Um, help support the channel further. Like I said, don't feel like you have to a like and a share and just subscribing is is more than good enough for us but if you want to support the channel further you get some perks as well become a channel moderator lots of other good stuff it helps support the channel further you can click that link and become a channel member thanks very much for watching and i will see you hopefully post-match where we have done what we need to do